Would you purchase a vehicle without test driving it first? Hopefully you would even take it to a trustworthy mechanic for their seal of approval, right? What about marriage? Would you marry someone before dating them? No, that'd be crazy, right? Yes, I know, there are shows like Married at First Sight, mind-blowing, but thankfully you're not on that show and thank goodness you're here. Home inspections are a crucial step in the home buying process. When you're considering buying a home, it's important to know what you're getting into before signing on the dotted line. A home inspection can reveal any potential problems with the property, such as structural issues, electrical or plumbing problems, or water damage. Knowing about these issues ahead of time can help you make an informed decision about whether or not you're comfortable moving forward with this purchase, and it can even give you leverage in negotiating with the seller for repairs or a lower purchase price. Ultimately, a home inspection can give you peace of mind knowing that you're making a smart investment and protecting yourself from unforeseen expenses down the road. Hey there, I'm Caitlin Henderson, a realtor serving real estate clients in Sumner County in the greater Nashville, Tennessee area. As you heard, today we're going to be talking about buyer expectations through the home inspection process. Before we get started, be sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss more videos like this one. I make an effort to warn all my home buyers before they meet their inspectors, hey, I just want to let you know your home inspector is going to make you feel like the house is falling to the ground. His or her job is to find any reason you should not buy this house. Don't panic, just ask questions. Although your inspector will know many minor issues, finding them all usually isn't possible due to the scope of limitations placed on the home inspection. You can also always feel free to ask any clarifying questions once you receive your report to make sure you're comfortable. It's important to know that your home inspector is there to conduct a visual inspection and should not be expected to move the seller's personal property or appliances. However, they should be entering all accessible attics, crawl spaces, and operate all the appliances, including HVAC systems and water heaters. If something like the HVAC system is something that's very important to you, I always recommend that you hire an HVAC expert. I actually have a recent testimony of giving one of my buyers that advice recently, and it served them. They will inspect a representative number of windows indoors, which is typically one window per room. They will run all plumbing for a short period of time, inspect all exterior, siding and trim, inspect any interior spaces, evaluate drainage around the foundation, and so much more. They will inspect visible structural items as well as the roof and foundation, anything that's practically visible. Now that we got the basics out of the way, let's answer some frequently asked questions. Number one, can you as the home buyer attend the home inspection? Yes, you can. This is a courtesy to you to have proper time to walk through with your inspector and be able to speak openly and ask honest questions. Now, I strongly recommend that you ask your inspector to tell you when they're about to be 20, 30 more minutes remaining before they're done, before you arrive. In order for the inspector to remain focused to do a good, thorough job, it's best to let them do their thing distraction-free. While they're wrapping up, you're welcome to use this time to take measurements to begin thinking about your design choices and where your furniture might be going. Number two, what add-ons can you have for the home inspection? So home inspectors do offer ancillary services by request, such as termite or radon inspections. Termites are found in about 30% of homes, even on slab, new build homes, and regardless of the age. Now, it doesn't mean you shouldn't purchase a home if they're found. Depending on the severity, you may just consider asking the seller to have it treated and any wood replaced or negotiate the terms of your contract. Most other inspections will require a specialist of some kind. So if there's something that is important to you, make sure you're scheduling those within your due diligence period. A mold inspection is recommended if you're concerned about indoor air quality or if there have been any signs of water damage. Especially in humid states like Tennessee, it's definitely something to consider keeping an eye out for. Overall, these add-ons can provide valuable information and peace of mind when purchasing a home. Be sure to discuss your options with your inspector and choose the ones that are most relevant to your particular situation. Question number three, should you have a new construction home inspected? Absolutely you should, and here's why. New construction can still have problems. Typically, there are many subcontractors that are each working on a particular part of the house without regard to the other components in the home. And this can easily lead to errors and oversight that oftentimes one subcontractor can damage or undo another one's work. 
I've seen it, and some things I've seen are just laughable. Some examples of problems could be mold in crawl spaces, disconnected pipes, missing installation, code violations, etc. Sometimes new construction communities will recommend you use one of their inspectors. My professional opinion, hire your own because sometimes they can still catch minor issues without that bias. Something as simple as nail holes in the roof might be found during a home inspection, which could save you the cost of a potential big leak repair or roofing problems down the road. Most issues found during the inspection should be repaired by the builder and not at your cost. Finding issues prior to closing allows these items to be fixed before you move in and while the subcontractors are still there working on the home. There are two different points for a new construction home that you could have an inspection conducted. One is pre-drywall inspection, which is done while the home is in the framing stage. This will allow the inspector to evaluate the structure, foundation, and electrical up to that point, plumbing, and HVAC. Again, repair work will typically be less expensive when it's caught early. The second time you could do that is for a final inspection when the construction is fully finished. Of course, you could do one at both, you'll just be paying for both of those appointments. Question four, what happens after the home inspection? After the home inspection, make sure to ask your inspector any lingering questions about their findings to make sure you're fully understanding and comfortable moving forward with your purchase. After that, consult with your agent. Meet to decide how you're going to respond regarding the transaction. You should be able to determine with your agent which defects you want to ask the seller to be responsible for, decide what you should ask the seller to repair, if there are any other specialists that need to be consulted or any repair estimate that you may need to acquire. Most often in negotiations, especially if you're gonna be asking the seller to cover something or part of the cost, the agent will typically ask for a quote. Question number five, can you just have the seller fix all of it? Truthfully, um, what's appropriate to ask for varies depending on the situation and the type of the transaction. Overall, in the most typical cases, if it's new construction, any defects or code violations should be remedied at the builder's expense. If it is an as-is sell or a bank-owned property, the inspection report is more so to assist you with your buying decision. It's rare that the seller will do any repairs. And if it's a typical resale, minor to major defects can all be negotiated, but again, every transaction will defer. Remember, there's no house that's 100%, so I'm going to encourage you not to focus on the small cosmetic details that you can fix over time. Your objective is to decide, is this home a good long-term investment for you and your goals? Your focus should be on issues that really matter because every home will have a list of minor and cosmetic issues that you can, again, slowly chip away at over time. And some final thoughts to leave you with, I encourage you to consider a home warranty. You can ask the seller to cover that, or it can be paid for directly by you. The cost is minimal in comparison to a major repair. Depending on the size of the home, it can be anywhere from $400 to $900. And if it's under warranty, depending which warranty you choose, major appliances, HVAC systems, and other things can be covered. So there's a positive takeaway for you as well. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you for watching. And as an added bonus in the description, I've attached a cheat sheet for the age of most major components in a home for you to know when buying. Could be a cool party trick too. Before you go, hit subscribe so you don't miss more tips on buying in Middle Tennessee. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.